Hi, this is Drip and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to... Today we're not dining on anything. This is too important. This is a flu epidemic almost that we're in. Maybe it's not as severe in some parts of the United States. I don't know how it is in the rest of the world. And it's nothing to do with the coronavirus. The flu kills far more people than the coronavirus. There's no comparison, at least so far. A second wave of the flu is hitting, is hitting the U.S. right now. And it's becoming one of the, the worst seasons for children in a decade. Usually the flu hits the elderly worse. But this one is going after the children. And the number of, of child deaths and hospitalizations is the highest since, since the severe flu outbreak of 2009 to 10. And the CD says it's going to keep going for weeks. So I made this video. The world won't miss. They won't miss a, a food review video some sandwich or something that's not important and my videos are even less important but this is to warn you all about the flu and there's so much publicity about it but I know people who still haven't even gotten their flu shots and the problem with this flu season is that it can present with similar with similar symptoms as the coronavirus Luckily, the coronavirus is not a problem here in the U.S. yet. And in most parts of the world, it's, it's not a, a severe problem at all. But the flu and the coronavirus can present similar symptoms. And in other countries outside the U.S., you do have a, a lot of flu. And where you have the coronavirus, you don't really know which, uh, which, what's causing the you know, your, your illness until you get tested. But this flu season in the U.S. has gotten off to its earliest start in 15 years. The first surge began predictably about October and November, and a second one has now come about in late January, and it's not yet peaked. Cases are still increasing. And just in the United States, 25 million Americans have gotten sick with the flu this past fall and winter. And about a quarter of a million have had, have had to go to the hospital. And there have been around 14,000 deaths. So, I'm, I want to talk to you about ways that you can prevent the flu. And I have some notes here. Most of these I know and most of them you already know. Let's go over them kind of quickly. Well, the best way to prevent the flu is simply to get vaccinated. And that's recommended for, for everyone six months and older. But by the way, all this information is from the CDC. So before you do anything, you should go, you should talk to your doctor and make sure you don't have any complications that would preclude you from getting from getting a, a vaccination. And the vaccination can be either a shot or it can be one of those uh, nasal sprays, something like that. I don't know which you will need, just that you need to have something. So consult your physician or pharmacist or someone who knows more about it than I do, which would probably be anybody off the street. They never get the, the, flu, the flu vaccine exactly right because it's, it's based on an, a guess from the last season and what they think the prevailing virus is going to be for the, the current or the upcoming season. But most of the time, I think it's fairly close. 
So that's the first thing, the most important thing, then, is getting your vaccination. You should avoid contact with people who are, who are sick. This is kind of obvious, right? You know, if you're sick, stay away from other people. Keep a distance from them. If you're sick, you should stay home until you recover. The only reason you should be leaving the house would be to go to the physician, go to your doctor. If you need food or some provisions, then someone, you must know one person on earth who you can depend on to bring you some kind of food or necessities. You should cover your mouth if you're going to sneeze or cough. If you don't have a handkerchief, then you sneeze into your elbow. A tissue or handkerchief, of course. You should clean your hands, obviously. This is the, about the best thing you can do outside of getting a, getting a vaccination. The best thing to use is, is just warm water, hot water, and soap. If you don't have that available, then use one of those little gels that you put some on your hand. Do that thing, you know. But soap and water is the best, better than an alcohol-based rub. Don't touch your eyes, your nose, your mouth, especially if you're at work or out in a restaurant or shopping or with friends. The average person touches their the face a few hundred times a day. And that's the best way to, to spread germs, of course. You should practice good other health habits, which are common sense, like eating properly, getting enough fluids, exercise, and having a good diet. This is the best way, the best thing you can do to prevent having any kind of problems. Get plenty of sleep. Be physically active. Watch your stress levels. If you have children in school, you should check with the school and make, and make sure that they have plenty of, of supplies like, like paper towels and alcohol-based rubs and that they clean everything down because children are notorious for catching all kind of colds. And probably the main way they catch them is from, from other children whose parents let them go to school. You can't say, well, I have to go to work. I can't watch my kids. Your first responsibility is to, after taking care of your, your child and yourself, is to make sure that you don't spread the illness to any other innocent people and cause them to waste their time and their money. And, of course, when my daughter was in school, I saw children come to school who were obviously sick, but their parents dumped them in the school. And let the school nurse worry about it if they have a school nurse. Not every school does. If you go into work, be careful about handling objects that, that other people have touched, like, like phones. Careful of your cell phone. You should clean your cell phone. Wipe your cell phone down. Watch other surfaces, like, like germs can even live on, on paper for for a while too. Keyboards is another place. For your hands and your typing. Spreading germs everywhere. If you start to feel sick at work, then go home. I've done that at least two or three times in my life. And don't be a hero. Nobody's going to really appreciate it if you go to work. Oh, I'm going to work anyhow. 
I'm going to show everybody that I get the job done. Show the boss I get the job done. Even if I'm sick. That's really just selfish. If you're sick, you need to stay home and get well. Here's a group of people who can be most affected by the flu. They're the most susceptible to it. Adults who are 65 and older. Oh, that would be me. And if I catch the flu, it'll be the end of me. I was in the hospital back in the summer for a little while because of some virus that just mysteriously appeared and overnight I was so sick that I had to go to the hospital and people who weigh less might maybe they're more susceptible to getting terrible illnesses and the flu can deplete you of course so yeah, with my body size I would just that would be the end of me another group that's a uh, People that are, that are susceptible are children younger than two years old. And it's children, like I just explained, who have been hit with the, with the flu this season, this starting in January especially. Pregnant women and women who are, who are just finishing the second week after they've had their baby People in nursing homes. That's, again, that's more the elderly and other long-term care facilities like assisted living. The highest risk among children are those who are younger than, than two years old. They have the highest hospitalization and death rates. People with asthma any kind of respiratory conditions, obviously those would be at risk of, of serious symptoms of the flu. Chronic lung disease, like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. Heart disease, congenital heart disease. Congestive heart failure. Kidney, liver disorders. People who have a, a, body, a body mass index, a BMI of 40 or higher. That is, they're obese. And people with a weakened immune system. These are the main conditions that exist in people who, who can be most severely affected by, by the flu and flu symptoms. So, I'm hoping I'm not going to work anymore. I still go out. I'm hoping I don't get caught up in any of that. And someone told me today that the local schools, some of them were looking at closing because so many of the children were sick. And I've actually seen people who in the area who are no longer shaking hands they're doing the the, what, the elbow thing or the fist bump gee I don't know if I even want your germs on my fist or not what little fist I have so do try to take care of yourself and I hope this is appropriate to make this kind of a video instead of the kind that, that I usually make. And not to scare people. It's just to let you know this is a worse season than in, in many years, especially for, for little innocent children. And I don't want to see those little children suffer. So I'm enjoying my Twinings tea here. And I hope you will remember to subscribe share 
like, and comment. I know ASMR videos are supposed to be more about relaxation, but why can't they be about learning and knowledge? And I've seen role plays for, for people going to the doctor. So this is not a role play. This is the real thing. I just want you to take care of yourself and by so doing, take care of others. And good luck out there. you do this right then you press this thing here no you put it down there like that the light comes on then you press it